Welcome back to Beauty Uncovered. I'm Danielle Frank. Recently, I've been thinking a lot about societal standards. Subconsciously, it's not hard to start believing that we cannot achieve something due to preconceived ideas of our capabilities. Now, some of these ideas are so pervasive that we're led to believe it's fact. For instance, in beauty, there has been a steady message for many generations about what the beauty standard looks like. Many people grow up believing you must have a certain body type, hair structure, bone structure, or even age in order to be considered beautiful or even relevant in the modern world. However, I've been seeing more and more people challenging the status quo, embracing who they are, and changing the dialogue. I mean, you know, perhaps it's my obsession with TikTok, which is a never-ending source of incredible stories, particularly about powerful women. But regardless, I'm genuinely fascinated by the women that are owning who they are, what they can do, and how they think beauty should be perceived by the world. It's defiant and compelling. For me, there is real beauty in that. Well, that brings us to this week's guest, Chelsea Memel. She is an American gymnast and is the third U.S. woman to achieve world all-around gold. She's earned a total of six world medals and helped the U.S. team win the Olympic silver medal by pulling off a performance despite a broken bone in her ankle. All incredible feats. But around 2020, 2021, she did something that is considered unthinkable in the world of gymnastics. After retiring in her early 20s, she went about her life, got married, had two beautiful children, was working. But eight years after retirement, she decided to train for the U.S. Olympic trials at 32 years of age. In a world where being in your 20s would put you in the category of geriatrics, taking that leap at 32 took a strength of character that is powerfully beautiful. So Chelsea, I have a confession to make. <laughs> no, I was okay. So when I was a kid, I loved gymnastics. I'm not saying I was good in gymnastics or even that I was trained in gymnastics, but I saw Mary Lou Retton, I'm aging myself, you know, back, I think it was 84. I think when they had the Olympics in Los Angeles and of like every other little girl, I was like obsessed. Mm -hmm. However, like when it's on, I will take a look, but I did, I'm not as up on that whole culture and everything that goes on with it. When I was looking up your information, I couldn't get over not only what you've accomplished, like when you were young, but even now, I mean, first of all, thank you for coming and kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, I, I want to first jump right into like what was the catalyst when you were a kid to get into gymnastics? Was it just something that your parents like, oh, let's get her some activity? It was my parents. They were both gymnasts. They worked oh. in a club and then opened up their own gym. So that is, it's literally where I grew up. <laughs> Did they ever compete at the level that you were at? Or is this just like, like the passion that they had? Um, not at the like elite and Olympic level. They both um, went to college for it. So they competed collegiate collegiately, which is incredible. Um, but it, it's the sport that brought them together. It is, they're both very passionate about it and, um, it's just, it's been their life. <laughs> so I, when you were growing up, I'm, I was originally thinking to myself, cause I didn't realize that your parents were so involved in all of this. I was sitting there thinking, well, okay, so what made the coaches look at you and go, Hey, this kid's got some stuff maybe we should take her to a different level. I would assume that was your parents that saw that. Well, they did. So I was obviously, I started at their gym because that's where I was. Um, and they did see talent. Um, and they did, they made the decision when I was seven to find a coach in a club that already had an established elite program. Um, Cause at that point they didn't want to have that kind of intense, like coach, child, father, daughter, mother relationship. They just wanted to be my mom and dad and be my cheerleaders and be my support system. Um, I was a little upset at the time. I was like, why are you sending me away? Um, 
But thankfully away was only 15 minutes to another club that in the same state, like we didn't have to do anything, uproot anything. Um, and I'm thankful for that. And it, and it was a really, you know, great relationship. And like I said, they were just able to be my support system and be there when I needed it. Um, but then I did come back and have my dad coach me when I was 16. Ooh, wow. So, I mean, how old were you when they first sent you to get trained by the other coach? Seven. Seven. Was it far from home? Nope. Nope. It was close. We were, we were very lucky. That I was going to say, I, that must be like, that must've been really hard. Yes. I, so I'm, I'm curious as to now at 16, your dad took over the coaching, but before that, like, I know that at the very, on a very base level, in order to compete at that level, the amount of sacrifices and, Mm -hmm. um, the intensity of that training must have been. I mean, can you tell us a little bit of what that's like? It is. It is a huge time commitment. Um, and especially when you're young, because you're also juggling school. So, you know, is it was making sure the school would, you know, work with you and work with your schedule because I really didn't want to be homeschooled. I wanted to have like a separate part mm. um of my life and not just be totally like 100% gym focused. Um, and we were lucky to have that too. Cause some, at, you know, once you get a little bit older and get into those higher levels, you're doing two a day workouts, at least two days a week. So like I said, it was figuring out working with the schedule, working with my schools and being able to do that. Um, I did have to homeschool after I went to half of my, uh, ninth grade. <laughs> And then they, some of the teachers like just would not budge on giving attendance grades. I'm like, come on, oh. I can do the work. <laughs> um, so leading up to my first trial at the Olympics when I was 16 is when I had to do like correspondence for a year. So were, were you trained by your parents before that Olympics or was it directly after? Uh, following that Olympics. Okay. So Here's my, my next question. Cause I mean, obviously you competed into your twenties, which is actually in in your, in that world in so many ways is like out to pasture. Yeah. Like it's, it's considered senior, you know, kind of mentality. Um, so the great thing is, is that you suddenly decided that you would train for the Olympic trials in 2020, was it 2020, 2021? Yeah. So, I mean, by that point you were in your thirties and, and had two amazing children. So what was like the thing that made you go, you know what? It's been eight years. Let's give it a go. (laughs) It, you know, it wasn't one thing. It was just kind of this like snowball effect. Almost. It was after I had my daughter, I had her in the end of 2017 and I just, you know, wanted just to get in shape again, just that was just what I wanted to do. And I started, you know, with walking and I love walking, love being outside. That's one of the things that I just enjoy. And then started conditioning a little bit more. I talked to a felt former teammate and, uh, asked him about Ninja. I was like, Hmm. And I went back to the gym. I remember after that trip and I tried leg lifts and stuff. And I thought, my stomach was going to rip. Cause I was like, I didn't really do that many ab and conditioning things after having her. And I'm like, well, that was a bad idea. I better get a base going first. <laughs> uh, so do you, did you feel like you were starting all over? Like it was like, cause I imagine there's a certain degree of muscle memory at the very least when it comes to timing, but your body obviously changes after you have children. It does completely. So I've never, ever had that feeling like of like leg lifts and that pain and that like, Oh my gosh, what just happened. But on the other hand, some of the muscles just like they, it was memory, but I still maintain some level of strength because I also remember my sister yelling across at the gym. Cause I did a set of 10 chin ups and she's like, you know, that's not normal. <laughs> and it made me though, but it made me stop and think and realize like how how lucky it too. And how much work though, that I had put in, like, since I was a child to to have that kind of strength. And I was very naive in thinking that physical things like that just came to everybody and people could do it. And I was like, Oh, 
no, not people have to work for that. You have to work for that. And it was just something that was a part of my life. And I, and I didn't realize, like I said, after having not done a chin up for probably two years that I could do 10. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I do have a base, but now I need to keep going. So obviously making that decision to go and, you know, train to compete. I mean, yeah, must have known that like the reception would be interesting. You know, I mean, like it would be, what is she doing? Whatever. I mean, it, I don't, I can't think of any other um, gymnast that actually really, I mean, there, maybe, I don't know, it could be wrong. Maybe Nadia Komanisha at some point might've tried to come back into it. I'm not really sure, but not many suddenly decide to come back into it in their thirties. Um, not many. <laughs> yeah. I have so many questions. So <laughs> like so many thoughts to that, because I sit there and I think, what is it about in that particular instance? I mean, obviously the physicality of being young and being able to do these amazing um, skill sets is uh, the, the your body is um, different at that time, right? Mm -hmm. But do you think that there's a specific reason why there aren't more women of in their 30s or beyond that are doing it? Is it because of the physical constraints? Or do you think maybe it's because a lot of them did that intense training when they were young and all the sacrifices and they're like, me, no, nope, don't want to do that anymore. I mean, I think it's a multitude of factors and I, you hit on a lot of them. There is so much intense training when we're younger and I, there's starting to be like a shift in thinking that we don't have to be like that intense, that crazy, that soon. And maybe that will help our longevity in the sport if, if you want to continue in it, um, and like, so for me, cause I train so differently this time around and a lot of people ask, well, do you think you could have done that kind of training younger? And I'm, I don't know. And I don't know if that kind of training and set that base allowed me to train much differently with, you know, less numbers, less rest repetitions, which is a huge, huge focus on quality over quantity. Um, so I really don't know, but I hope it continues to shift into people's like minds. And it's not just like coaches, it's everybody, it's coaches, it's the kids, it's the parents, it's everything as a whole to be like, we don't have to go so hard so soon and like put that many hours in when you're so young. Um, you can still get to a high level, but maybe we can spread it out a little bit better. So we're, you know, not having all of these overuse injuries and this, or people just wanting to leave the sport because it is it is. It's going to be intense. If you want to get to that highest level, it is absolutely going to be intense, but it shouldn't have to be like that for everybody. Do you think that with, with, um, I mean, with modern technology, I mean, there's so many things coming out about physical fitness and, and the levels that people can achieve and different types of training. I mean, in all honesty, like, I mean, from a casual observer, it does seem as though, you know, what worked back in the days of like, I don't know, I would even go as far as saying the Soviets that, you know, back in the day, yeah. um, how they trained like to the point of almost, I mean, at least our perception back in those days that it was like almost mechanical. It was like a machine, um, but it was effective. They had very effective, very um, high level athletes that came out of that, but it just kind of transferred over and it was like, oh, it's a winning formula. But you sit there and think about the amount of athletes that might have really come to greatness, but with the amount of overuse and the injuries that came from it, probably lost opportunities that they might not have ever had to. Oh, I mean, without question that absolutely happened or if someone who has this injury, then they're like pushed aside for this next person coming up. It was like survival, like who, who can just make it there. Um, and you know, and like with everything else, you know, coming out, it, it's, it sucks. Cause it's like so many more people maybe could have enjoyed the sport a little bit more or gotten farther, gotten to where they want to be. Um, if they weren't pushed so hard, so fast. 
So like I said, I hope this like movement continues of trying to train smarter. Um, and that's really what I tried to do. My main focus wasn't always on the skills. My main focus, and again, it was because I'm a little bit older and I know my body a little bit better, but my main focus was on like the physical fitness of it. I never put so much like thought into that kind of training. Um, and it, I was always just like conditioning because someone told me to, and I knew I had to, because I knew it was going to help, but my whole mentality around it shifted when I was older. And I was like, I'm, I, well, I, one, I do it because now I actually enjoy it, but two, I'm doing this because I know it's going to allow me to do gymnastics. So my attitude that just made it training so much better too. Cause my attitude around how I worked out was so different. And I was like, I'm doing it to feel good. I'm doing it to feel strong and look at the amazing things I can do because I'm working out and taking care of my body like that. So it's taking power over, over all of it really. Yes. Wow. Wow. So let me ask them. So when you went to this competition, I can't help but think like it, I mean, did you get any feedback from other competitors or even the judges? Like I, I'm wondering what their thoughts were. Okay. So actually, so I have been a judge. I've been a judge since 2013. So I know all of them personally. <laughs> um, and they were all incredibly supportive. I mean, we didn't have a lot of interaction at the meet because, you know, you're really not supposed to do too much, but just very supportive of, of stepping back from my role as a judge for that little bit and, and going back to that competing side. Cause they, they had all judged me obviously throughout most of my career anyway. Um, so that, that was kind of funny as well, but the, as far as the competitors, um, they were incredibly welcoming and very supportive. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. Cause it, it, it was, it was so weird stepping into that, into that arena again in the floor. Like I remember so vividly that the very first, even just training day at classics. And I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> like, do, am I doing this? And it's, and it's, it's really hard. Cause I'm like, like, should I be here? Can I be here? Am I allowed to be here? Like, is this really a good idea? Like, what did I get myself into? It was really it was, it was I a almost like in my head, I'm like comparing it to be being in your thirties or your forties. And then suddenly deciding I'm going to sign up for college and my freshman year and be with kids that are 18 years old or, um, or go into a dorm. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. No, exactly. There, there were kids half my age, more than half my age, you know, competing. So it was, it was a lot of emotions like that, where I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's funny because it, it, I mean, not, not that it's any way, shape or form the same, but I'm like in my head relating. Um, I actually, cause I'm a, I'm a licensed cosmetologist, but I did not do that until I was 39. So I went to beauty school at 39 with a whole lot of 18 year olds and feeling like, am I doing the right thing right now? Like, what am I doing right now? <laughs> I, I can only relate it to that. Cause that must've been a little mind blowing. It was, it, it really, it really was. But like I said, the girls who were in my group, cause you know, you're in a rotation with just a few of them, like I said, super supportive, super, super welcoming. And it just made that first competition back that much better. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it's a very, it was a very weird feeling, but then also just like incredible relief after the first routine went well. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. So but when it comes to like going back to the training for everything, cause I think this is the real point of difference is like looking at how you, you probably took more control of your training. I'm assuming you still had coaches and everything. Yeah. My dad, I asked him to coach me again. Ooh, that's helpful. <laughs> And no, it is. And we make a really good team. But yeah, it was this. I mean, I was self-driven before, but this was like a whole nother level of self-driven. Like he didn't really monitor like my conditioning. He didn't come up with any kind of conditioning plan or tell me what I needed to do for that, which was, like I said, just incredibly. It was 180 from before. Like he knew 
I was getting what I needed to do, get done. And if I was like, Hey, am I missing something? Like it was, it was just different like that. He's like, yeah, maybe you should add this and this. And it was great. Um, almost like a consultation in that way. It was. So like I said, it was just, it was very different, especially with that side of it. Like I said, being me just being the one like super into the conditioning and being strong as I can be. And, um, but also like, it was just very empowering. It was like, I like how I feel. I was like, I am stronger than I was when I was 20, which is also like, hmm, I know, right. <laughs> I was like, I did that. And that was Two kids later. <laughs> no, it was, it, for me, it's just something to be really, really proud of to, to find like that motivation again, and also kind of fix a broken relationship with food because mm. I never did all the healthiest things, but to, to figure out, like I said, what worked for me, what was sustainable and not a quick fix. Cause those never work. They never work. I know, work. but we're so attracted to it. It is, it is very attractive to hear, Hey, you can do this and lose 10 pounds in a week. And it's like, well, maybe, but can you, it's not sustainable. It's really, and not is your body going to perform the way you want it to? I no, mean, it's, it's not. So it's, it was trying to like, let go of, of that. And I took an entire year to get in shape. And that's what some people who were with me for the entire journey, they, they knew that, but some people were like, well, this is great. I'm like, I did not do gymnastics. I took an entire year or more. It was almost more than a year to where I was really, really strong and fit after having Audrey, all my second child. Um, so the whole thing was a process and a journey of like learning and figuring out what worked for me and what made me happy, what made me healthy. And what, again, like I said, what was a lifestyle that was maintainable? Right. Um, cause I, it's funny. Cause I was thinking about how, you know, obviously when you were younger, you had these coaches that probably was a little bit more like a dictatorship, you know, you did what you were told to do. And now I, cause I was thinking to myself, gosh, to have a coach, that is sitting there being like that could be at that elite level um, or help you compete at that elite level and be amiable to changing the whole rhythm of things, you know, and that kudos to your dad. Cause even that must've been kind of hard. Uh, yes and no. I mean, he's, I, I don't know. He's just great. And like I said, we make a very good team, but it, it was definitely a different style of training. The numbers were lower but we communicate very well with each other and just like kind of know, and he knows like when he needs to push me like, well, no, you probably should do another one or you know, <laughs> know that it's, it's fine. And it was finding a balance. Cause honestly it was new territory for both of us. Neither mm -hmm. of us had trained like that before. So it was, it was. Which is kind of a fun adventure right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's cool. It was. Did you feel a little bit like you were shaking the fist at the man, just going, okay, do this. <laughs> I guess a little bit in the sense that I really only did gymnastics, like skills and stuff three days a week and sometimes four, which was like opposite. It was always six before mm -hmm. a minimum five days a week. And like I said, so it was completely different as going Monday, Wednesday, Friday was my harder gymnastics days and Tuesday, Thursdays were just like conditionings and maybe like drills and working out. Those are my hard workout days. Um, but again, it, it was, you know, you're different. I've done a lot of the numbers when I was younger and it's a different mentality. And like I said, it's, it's quality over quantity. Cause even when you're younger, if you do 10, okay ones, it's still better to do three fantastic ones. And if you right. have the focus and the, capability of doing those three fantastic ones. Like I said, it's much better than doing 10, just okay ones. Now I've seen your social media where you have Audrey on there playing with you and the gymnastics, everything was just absolutely freaking adorable. Um, and both your son and your daughter are, are active in that is are do, I mean, they could be just too young to even like even speculate, but do you feel like there is a potential of them going to a certain level if they wanted to? And if so, do you feel as though, Hey, maybe we got a better way of doing this. 
Uh, what? I have no idea. I mean, honestly, they, they're both in classes two days a week. If it's a sport that they want to stick with it, that's great. I'm going to support them. If they want to do other stuff, that's great. I'm going to support them too. Audriel has been a little bit young to start some of the other leagues, but Dashiell has already tried, you know, t-ball and soccer. He wants to try basketball. And I'm like, let's try it all. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it just doesn't make sense to like try to pigeonhole a kid like right away. And if they want to explore all the, I, I want them to find a passion or to find something that they're passionate about, even if it's not in sports. Um, I feel lucky that I found it so young and that I can t- continue to do it and continues to be a big part of my life. Um, so yeah, if they want to do it, that's great. If they don't want to do it, that's great too. And we're just going to kind of see how it goes. So what do you think you're going to do in the future? From this point on? From this point on? Well, I want to training. I want to keep doing gymnastics. My body has been a little more reluctant right now. <laughs> it needed a, a little bit of a break. Um, you know, after it was, it, you know, a little bit more intense, just a little bit older, takes a little bit longer to recover, um, yeah. you know, from those few, just few competitions, just the couple nagging ankle injury. Mm-hmm. And then going on tour, that was also hard on my body. Um, but that was an amazing thing to be a part of. And I'm so glad I got to do it and was able to, you know, do all 32 shows successfully. Um, but yeah, that that was about a lot. So I'm taking a little bit of a break, but still continuing to work out and do light gymnastics. Um, but I want to... I want to be able to do gymnastics as long as I want to do it, um, even if it's not competitively, because there's still certain skills and certain things that I just, I love doing. And I, I don't know why I should not do them. Right. When I still have the ability to do them. <laughs> so here's, here's my question. Now, we kind of, before we jumped on here, we kind of touched on it a little bit because when it comes to societal norms and what we are, um, what our expectations, what everybody says that we can or cannot do. And it is hard sometimes to break through that though. I personally feel as though, I don't know if it's this younger generation that's out there, but they really are questioning all of those norms. And it, it does give us permission to go ahead and do that. No matter how you shake a stick at it, I don't care how much training and how accomplished you were when you were younger, it still took some chutzpah <laughs> to do what you did. What advice would you give to women, regardless of what thing is in their life, whether it be changing careers or going after something that maybe they wanted to do when they were younger and were told, yeah, you know, you've gotten too old for that, but now want to do it. Or even just the standards of how we're supposed to live. What would you say is like a big breakthrough, at least for you? It started as working out. And then we started doing workout challenges that turned into the Chelsea challenges. And it lit that like competitive fire in me. And I wanted to work out more and get stronger. So those challenges got easier and better and I could perform very well. And then I started, you know, working out even more and more and doing gymnastics And it was really, honestly, it was during the pandemic when it was like that light bulb switch of like, this is something that I'm doing for me that I enjoy and I need to keep doing it. Um, Even though, you know, some people might not agree with or be like, you're too old to do this. Why are you doing that? I'm like, it is movement. It's healthy (laughs) and it's fun and I enjoy it. And it was And like I said, it was, I didn't really realize how much I needed it until I kind of took a step back. And like I said, during the pandemic, when everything was crazy, nobody knew like anything or how long or this or that. And it was like the one thing that I could control when everything else felt like chaos. And I would be able to go into the gym and my kids would at least be able to play, but I could focus and put, like I said, 100% because gymnastics requires 100% focus. And I was able to tune everything out and just do that. And that made such a difference in my life, especially, like I said, during that crazy period. Um, 
even though it's still kind of crazy now, but whatever. <laughs> still, but but it's not as crazy, crazy as it was. <laughs> but not as crazy as it was. When everything was so uncertain and so chaotic, it was that outlet for me. And that was like the switch was like, oh, this is like kind of what I've been missing. Even like before the pandemic, before everything like that went crazy, I was like, this makes me happy. It is something that fills up like my cup and it allows me to focus even better on my kids on this. So regardless of of what society was saying, it really didn't matter really. I I feel like with your training, (laughs) you know, because I would imagine that there is a certain level of, um, you know, aside from the fact that you have the physical training, but there's also a mental training as well. I mean, there is a matter of turning off the opinions of other or turning off, um, you know, not allowing the comp- competition to get in your head. Yes. Um, I would imagine there is a certain amount of mental discipline um, to kind of tune out the naysayers. Um, there is for sure. And, you know, I've at least had some practice with that just growing up in the gymnastics world in a sport that is judged um, and kind of, you know, just uh, being around it and, you know, having my parents always there as support to me, like you, you can just, you can choose not to listen to it or you can like take it in and go compete and be like, okay, watch me. I'm, you don't think I can do it. I'm going to do it. Um, and I really kind of like that attitude. Like you don't think I can do it. Well, I'm going to go do it anyway. (laughs) Um, and, and do it like with style. And like I said, doing something that you enjoy, that's for you. I think everybody should have that opportunity or give themselves that opportunity. Allow yourself to to go and do something that you enjoy or, like you said, change careers or do something like that or go back into the something that you don't feel like, you know, you got the best chance at when you were younger. And I've had a lot of conversations with adult gymnasts, too, who are like, people just think you're crazy. And I'm like, I know. But I don't understand why, because, you know, nobody bats an eye for people who golf into their 80s or, you know, anybody can go on a golf course or you all the, you know, the bar leagues with soccer, basketball, baseball, whatever. Why does like gymnastics or other things like that have to be weird? They shouldn't be. But do you think that there's like a certain, like the way do feel like the more recent um, gymnasts that I've seen, uh, competing nowadays do break the norm, but there was a certain body type and which obviously most women that are, um, that have children and are older do not have that same body type that, like that's the norm. That's the standard. I mean, do you think that it changes the way that they look at how a routine would go? I guess it depends like on what level you're thinking. I'm just kind well, of I'm also thinking that the it, you know the the look of the person is kind of their problem, isn't it? Like not yours. <laughs> if you can do the skill set. If yes, if you can do it and you don't like how I look, that's your problem. Yeah. You know, it's not I'm there that is definitely that's been a thought like you need to be like this, look like this, fit in this mold to be a high level gymnast. And that is just not true. That's there isn't one specific body type that is like the perfect gymnast body type. That's just it's it's not true. <laughs> and I think anybody has a shot at doing gymnastics, but yes, you do. I mean, you're I know we have like the pieces of equipment, but your body is essentially like your equipment. So yes, you do have to take care of it and be strong to an extent, be flexible to an extent, but there are things that you can do. I think anybody can do. Well, I have to say you are the second Olympian gymnast that I have interviewed on this podcast in the year that we've been doing this. And both of you, Samantha Pezik being the other, and I have to say both of you have given such great insight and um, very inspired, very inspired, Chelsea. I really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. I I enjoyed it as well. Yay!